Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today we're going to be talking about the M1A1, also known as the Thompson, and when further upgraded with a forward grip and 50 round drum style magazine, it is known as the Tommy Gun. This is one of the new weapons available in Battlefield Hardline's first DLC, Criminal Activity. Now apparently this gun is going to be available to everyone on Tuesday, whether or not you bought the DLC, and it's also going to be available for all classes. The only attachments you can give it are an extended mag and forward grip. Your camo options are limited to bronze, silver, and gold. And there are no optics available for this gun whatsoever. Now thematically, this gun fits in perfectly with Hardline. The Thompson was originally used in World War II as an SMG, not with this drum round though. And uh, then the mobster sort of adopted the weapon, had this drum round magazine for it, and it became a notorious mobster gun. So Hardline, criminal activity, Tommy gun makes sense. Bullet-wise, this gun shoots the 45 ACP, so same type of round that you would see in the K10. Uh, you can imagine the damage per shot is going to be pretty high, and with this 50 round magazine, the damage potential is pretty substantial. The rate of fire is not particularly high. Listed as 725 rounds per minute, it's certainly not going to hold up to the K10 in terms of damage per second, but if you slap that 50 round drum magazine on there, you can potentially kill a lot more people. Now, as far as I can tell, there doesn't seem to be a reason not to equip the foregrip on this gun. The specific stats aren't out on it yet, but the description just seems to indicate that all it does is make the gun more accurate and easier to control. As far as the drum round goes, it does increase your magazine capacity by 20 rounds, but it also reduces your agility, so I believe that probably means you're going to be less accurate while on the move or maybe shooting from the hip. I'm not 100% sure on that. It would be cool if this gun had really good hip fire accuracy overall, though, because that's how you usually see the mobster shooting it in the films and from what I hear a lot of that is due to the fact that this gun is incredibly heavy when loaded up with a full drum magazine. In fact when the Thompson is unloaded it weighs over 10 pounds which is totally crazy to think about especially since it's an SMG. If you compare that to say just a basic M4 carbine the M4 weighs about six and a half pounds. You can even get way lighter ones than that. So this thing weighs almost double of what an M4 weighs without the magazine. And when you put a drum round in there, it's going to increase that weight significantly. So that's a really heavy gun to consider for a PDW. But you have to consider the era in which this gun was designed. I mean, the World War II era of fighting most weapons were made mostly out of steel. So you really weren't saving any weight. Nowadays, you have all these these high-tech alloys, lots of uh, weapons are made out of aluminum for most of the bodies, even some plastic guns on pretty much all KSG guns and stuff like that are polymer. The G36C is almost completely polymer, so it's cool with all the advances in gun tech. It's just kind of crazy to think about a weapon of this size not being very big at all weighing so much. Now, as much as I love the aesthetics of the Tommy gun and the idea of it being in Battlefield Hardline, it is not an easy weapon to use. Yes, for one, you are way out damaged by a lot of other guns out there. It's not to say the Tommy gun can't do decent damage, and this magazine capacity is certainly nice, but when running into K10s, you're just not even going to stand a chance against them. The other downside is the fact that you can't equip any optics on here. Now, I'm a big fan of kind of keeping the traditional look of the gun, but the problem is it's incredibly hard to track targets, and when you don't have a high rate of fire, you need to be accurate as all heck, and you just can't really be with this weapon, especially on nighttime maps. Once you get that muzzle flash going on the end of this gun, it can be almost impossible to track a target moving perpendicular to you, so you kind of have to just get up close and personal to the point where you can't really miss. Long range, it's going to be a lot tougher. Now, unfortunately, I just don't have the stats on this gun yet, so I can't do a lot of intricate, detailed analysis. The hit fire on it seemed all right, but you're probably not going to want to use it too far away. And at the event I was playing it to capture this gameplay here, I was playing against a lot of other really good players. So pretty much all firefights I was being tested to the max and if this gun is wavering in any way whatsoever I was not going to do so well. Granted a lot of the other players were also using the Tommy gun but a lot of them were also using the FAL which is a beast of a weapon and you won't want to miss that weapon review because it is just an amazing gun. Probably one of the new better guns in the game. So that pretty much concludes my preview review of this weapon if you will. One of the best benefits if it sticks with this gun is the fact that it seems to be available to all classes so you can do a little bit of 
creative customization with the weapon and it can potentially deal a lot of damage if you run into a lot of players. I also really love the integration of gangster era weapons into the game and I hope we can see more of this in future DLC. As always guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.